Hey everyone, welcome to the Seaborn series. I'm Kimberly Fessel, and today we'll be talking about the Seaborn bar plot. Seaborn's bar plot is a categorical estimate plot. We'll talk more about that in this video, as well as confidence intervals, horizontal bar plots, using hue to represent more than one category, as well as many, many other topics. So let's get started with the Seaborn bar plot basics. To begin coding in Seaborn, we first just import the Seaborn library, and I'm also going to import NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib for some additional styling and functionality. The data we're going to be looking at today comes from Seaborn itself, and these data are about penguins, so we have various different measurements for various different Antarctic penguins. I'll also set my styling to be dark grid, and now we're ready to make our first bar plot. So to do that, I'll just reference the Seaborn library and call up the bar plot. And what I want to do now is tell Seaborn what I'd like on the x-axis. So in this case, I'm actually going to look at the species of these various birds. And then on the y-axis, I will look at their body mass. And we also need to provide to Seaborn where these data come from. So see how the syntax works here. Penguins is a data frame and x and y are the column names. So this may be a little different than other bar plots you're used to, but what Seaborn has done is actually grouped these birds up by this species column and then taken the mean body mass for each group. So we can check that out by doing a group by. Let's look at the penguins data frame and group those up by our species column and then take a look at the body mass for grams. And we're just going to look at the mean of that. So these numbers here, this group by, are what is being displayed on this bar plot. And so that's what's meant by saying that the Seaborn bar plot is a categorical estimate plot because we are grouping up by a particular category. So typically with the Seaborn bar plot, you will have one variable that is categorical and then one variable that is numeric. If you'd like to switch how this plot looks, of course you can build a horizontal bar plot, but now all we need to do in the bar plot is switch which value is our x and which is our y. So now x will be our body mass and y will be the species. And our data still come from penguins. So because the categorical variable is now on the y-axis, we get these nice horizontal bars where body mass is then being plotted across the x-axis. You're probably familiar with the type of information a bar plot conveys, but how does Seaborn's categorical estimate work and how do we build those confidence intervals on top of each bar? So let's say we have data like these where we know the species and body mass of each penguin in our data set. When we specify that the species should be the x value in our bar plot, Seaborn will identify the species of each penguin and then group them up. Then we'll compute the mean value for each group and display that as the height of our bar plot. We'll continue doing that for each group in our data set. So that's the height of the bars. What about the confidence intervals? Seaborn uses a process called bootstrapping to do this. What we'll do is actually create many, many different bootstrap samples of this data set. We'll then proceed to calculate the mean of each group within each of those bootstrap samples. Eventually, we'll draw these confidence intervals such that 95% of the means of each group are contained within these estimates. And if you want to learn more about bootstrapping, check out my past video on the Seaborn line plot. So let's take a look at what we can do with the confidence intervals in the Seaborn bar plot. So right now we do see that we have confidence intervals. So if we set our CI argument to be 95, that'll give us this exact same thing as the default. So this is where we can control what percent shows up on this graph. So if we'd like to reduce this, now you'll see that those bars get a little bit shorter. One common thing that you might want to do is actually turn off those confidence intervals completely. So to do this, we set CI equal to none. And now you will not see those little estimates on top of each bar. So this will completely skip that bootstrapping step. So if you have a lot of data and you don't need confidence intervals, you could just set CI equal to none to skip that step and potentially save a bit of time here. So far, we've just been looking at taking the mean over each group, but you actually have different options that you could take any kind of statistic you'd like. So let's work with this property called estimator. 
So here we're actually just going to switch over to the standard deviation. So I'm getting the standard deviation from the NumPy library, and this will give us an estimate of what the standard deviation looks like for each species group. And let's go ahead and verify that we have the correct numbers here by taking a look at describe. So I've grouped over species, taking the body mass and look to describe. If we take a look at the standard deviations, we're talking about 300 to 500 range, which is exactly what we see in this figure. Of course, you have quite a few options on different estimators you could use. Um, for example, we could also take a look at the maximum value. So let's say that we would like to look at the max. We'll just set estimator to be NumPy's max function. So we're getting a sense here, what is the maximum body mass for each species? And also, how does that maximum potentially vary when we are doing bootstrap samples? And what if your data can be grouped into more than one category? Let's see how Seaborn handles two categorical variables. So right now we are displaying one categorical variable for these data, that is the species. But if we have a second categorical variable, we can also display that using color. So to do this, we just need to reference the hue property and pass in the name of the other categorical variable you'd like to represent. And this will just be another column in your data frame that does have categorical data. So here I've separated these penguins also out by male versus female. And the separation also works if you have a horizontal bar plot, again, just referencing the column that you'd like to split everything up by. So by default, Seaborn is going to order these bars by the order that it saw each category in the data frame. If you'd like to switch that, no need to adjust your data at all. You can just reference this order property. So here what we need to do is just pass in the list of how we would like these penguins to be ordered. So in this example, I'm going to order these penguins based on the largest average first. Passing in this order list, you could just put these bars in whatever order makes sense for your data problem. And if you'd like the hue categories to appear in a particular order, you can just reference this hue order property. So now let's put the female penguins and then the male penguins. Now the female bars come first and then the males for every single penguin species. And what about some more advanced styling? In particular, how can you change the color of objects on your bar plot? Let's take a look. So by default, Seaborn is going to use this color scheme of blue, orange, and then green for each of your bars. If you'd like to switch the color, of course, you can just reference this color argument and pass in whatever color you'd like. Here I'm switching it to this nice cyan color. And so this will switch all of the bars to that same color. You also have the option of changing the color of your error estimates, and so that's just a property called error color. And let's switch that to dark slate blue. Besides just switching the color, you can also switch how wide those error estimates appear. So now we have some very thick error estimates on top of each bar. Instead of switching all bars to the exact same color, you also have the option of using a palette. So here we reference the name of one of Seaborn's 140 different palette options, and each bar will appear in a different color. So finally, I just wanted to let you know that the Seaborn bar plot does inherit from matplotlib's bar object. So you actually have even more styling options if you'd like to reference some of those arguments. Here we put a nice little line around the edge of the outside, and we can also even change that line width. If there is something very specific you'd like to do, I'd recommend just checking out the documentation for more options. A few weeks ago, I received this comment on my channel from Nishant, asking if we could use Seaborn to build a stacked bar plot. So I did a little digging in the source code, and it turns out that you can build a stacked bar plot with Seaborn, but it requires quite a bit of code. You basically need to build one bar plot on top of another and you'll have to use this bottom argument to make sure that those bars appear at the correct height. So I would definitely recommend sticking with pandas to do stacked bar plots. You might just want to use Seaborn to set the style of your plot beforehand. And you can access this code for the Seaborn stacked bar plot along with everything else I showed you today on my GitHub page. So thanks so much for joining me to learn about the Seaborn bar plot. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel where I'll be doing more Seaborn videos in the future. See you then.